So car salesman is not selling her a minivan. He is selling them a mobile control unit for the entire family, right? Like you can live your life, you can have your cooler in here and all your kids and your phone and the TV and the diaper bag and everything else. Look at all these compartments. That's what a good salesman is doing, selling a minivan. So what are you doing? How are you addressing both the things that cause them pain? And I don't just mean physical pain, I mean emotional pain, right? Like they're annoyed by this stuff. Versus what gives them more pleasure? How can you increase their pleasure? Particularly our industry, this is a no-brainer, right? Like we're all about pleasure. So it's a matter of making it relatable to them. So something to keep in mind too is that um, telling stories makes a big difference. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so number three, country clubbing your business. So everybody knows what a country club is, yes? Yes. Okay, country clubs are elite because they're expensive. It's not something that everyone can afford to do. And so those that are members of them are like, oh, I'm, I am a member of blah, 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 right? And people who are not are like, well, <laughs> to you, yeah? But there's always a piece who's like, I would like to be able to say that I am also a member, yeah? So that inclusivity issue runs rampant through the human population. We want to be part of what's hot and fresh and now. We just do. Even if you live an alternative lifestyle, you still wanna be part of that group, right? You wanna feel included, you wanna feel loved, you wanna feel accepted. And so that's what we're gonna do with your business. You are gonna create an exclusive club in your business and you can call it whatever you want. For our intents and purposes, we're gonna call it a VIP club and an elite VIP club, okay? So when you're doing your presentation, um, typically you're gonna choose something for VIP that's a consumable product, like Splash or Obsessed or something like that, um, where it's not excessively expensive, even Illusion, Illusion's probably a better choice, a little less expensive, um, but you can get them in a six pack, dig it, right? Um, so you're getting them cheaper and they're fun and everybody uses it. Everybody uses shower gel, everybody uses lip gloss, everybody uses moisturizer, pick one of those things. That doesn't always have to be the same thing. You can switch it out based on what was on sale or whatever you're excited about this month. But when you're doing your presentation and you show that item, all you're gonna say at the beginning is, girls, remind me, and at the end of the show, I will tell you how you can get this completely free tonight, okay? That's the seed that you dropped, that's it. Then you go about your show and you keep on going. And when you get to the end of your show and you're doing your closing speech, part of your closing speech is talking about how big their wish list is and how everybody obviously has a budget. But ultimately, we're here not only to hook up ourselves, but to hook up our hostess. And when you do that, I'm gonna reward you. I have a VIP club. And for those of you whose orders hit $150 tonight, you're gonna get this illusion, that fabulous lip gloss, completely free tonight, okay? But those of you who are treating yourself, who are excited about that executive or that do not disturb, when your order hits 300, you're gonna be an elite VIP. And you will not only get this illusion, you will get whatever it is you decide to give her. Um, some people like to have a specific toy. I personally like to have a toy chest that's filled with a variety of things that I've gotten on sale. They're generally retired toys, things that were on deep discount, maybe something seasonal that came in. And I let them choose. I'll hold up my box and be like, you can choose whatever you want out of this treasure chest. And they're fun. Okay? So you've set the stage for this. Everything, it's easy. 150 or 300. That's it. Don't get crazy. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Um, and then when they come in the shopping room. So the girl comes in and she's at $90, okay? You're gonna say, I just wanna remind you that you're only $60 away from becoming VIP and getting this illusion free. I see on your wish list that you're interested in that put a ring on it. Did you have questions about it? If she waffles at all, if she's like, well, uh, uh, unless she says no, work with her, okay? This is when you're like, listen, I wanna look up the hostess and I want you to get what you really want. So what if I just chopped off that last $9? We'll make it a nice round 60. It's exactly what you need to get 150 and you'll get that illusion. Would you like to go home with it? Yes. You will be shocked how often just taking a little bit off, they're like, boom, I'm in. You now have higher sales. You're still making profit. You're not giving away everything. The hostess is ecstatic. And here's the catch. The first person that hits one of those levels, you're gonna ask her, do you mind if I announce you as our first VIP? 
have once in a blue moon, you're gonna have somebody that says, I'd rather you not, because they don't want anybody to know how much money they spent. And that's fine, respect her. But more often than not, they're gonna be like, okay, right? Like, yeah. And so you walk out of that shopping room with her, arm around her, arms linked, whatever's comfortable for the two of you. And you're gonna say, girls, I need to introduce you to our first VIP of the night. Give it up for Becky. You're, I mean, woo, you're fun, you're excited. Step out of your comfort zone, be a little more fun, okay? Because Becky is like holding up her bag like, yeah? And all the girls are like, ah! And they have all just looked at their wish list because in their head, they're like, if that bitch is a VIP, so am I. Or <laughs> oh, if you think I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm not kidding, okay? They're, we're very competitive, very. Particularly if they don't particularly love the first girl. Oh yeah, now they're like, oh no, she's not gonna buy more than me. So now, you'll, even if, let's say that Becky was the third person to order, but she's still the first VIP, one and two may very well come back to you and say, is there something else that I could add on to my list so that I can get that? Yeah, yes, come on in, right? Never say no. Um, so imagine, even if you have a party average um, headcount of eight people, if three people from every party do this, do you see what's gonna happen with your sales? Seriously, y'all, like it makes a huge difference. And then you're also setting the expectation for when they book parties, they're gonna tell their girls, she's got this VIP thing, y'all, like you can get all kind of free crap from her, it's awesome, come ready to shop, yes? It will compound, it will literally snowball throughout your business so that now, I mean, I'll tell you, it's just a, an expectation that my clients are gonna come in and drop that. People feel badly and they're like, oh, I can't at VIP tonight. But that's the girl that you're gonna book because she's on a budget, right? Like, you've got a solution for everybody. Nobody loses. It's just a matter of whether it's immediate gratification or delayed gratification. All right. Okay, so number four. I want you to show less so that you can sell more. So I need you to kind of imagine, anybody in here have ADD like me? We joke about it, but like for real? Yeah, okay. I know, my attention span is like a gnat, okay? I'm like, ah, <laughs> shiny, yay. So, so is everybody else, especially because of social media. Like, we have a hard time focusing on anything. So if you're doing an hour long demo or more, you're only getting them the first 20 minutes. You're gonna have to figure out how to break this up a little bit and redirect them, because by the time you get to your toys, they're tuned out. So I want you to think about a couple of things. First of all, the items that you're showing, are you actually selling them? You'll know if you go into your reports, even if you don't enter after party stuff, even if all you're doing is buying product, go into your reports and look at your purchased product report. Look at the items with the highest numbers. That is what you sell well, because clearly it's hammering through your inventory, right? If you show between the sheets, and in the last six months, you've sold three, stop showing it. Get rid of it. Yes. You have a huge product line. There are magical products that you're never showing and you're showing stuff that you're not selling, which means you're literally wasting time. You're not making any money when you do that. It's literally four minutes of wasted time at your party. So look at what it is that you sell well, keep showing that and get rid of the stuff that you don't. This also helps you keep things fresh so that your party is fun and different, yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna show you, this is Katie Wheeler. She's an executive director out of Maryland and she had such a cute idea to share about how to sell the obsessed without taking a lot of time at the party. Hi ladies, here is a fun little tool that you can use at your parties. Just go ahead to Target or Walmart, go in the picture frame section, you get a little frames that look like this for your party. Get your four obsessed colors and go ahead and use your own lips to make that these. Um, and then I just pass this around at my party. So I'm gonna hold up to the camera so that you can see it. It just has my lips, all four colors, and then XOXO Katie at the bottom. So instead of passing around the lip glosses, I uh, hold them up, talk about them, and then I pass this around and have them write down their favorite color. Hope it helps, bye. This is brilliant. Okay, because here's what I'm gonna tell you. Lip gloss, they either want it or they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like. It doesn't require an explanation about how it works. They literally <laughs> like the color or they don't. That's all that matters. So it shouldn't be taking up a lot of your time. Um, the other thing you can think about is, are you spending a ton of time demoing 15 to $20 items? Or are you showing a handful of those and really getting to the good stuff? Because 
Your job is to show them the best. The catalog has the rest. Whatever you show is what they're going to buy. You can always dial it back if they're on a budget, but it's really challenging to go the other direction and go higher. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like when I do my party, I don't know if anybody's watched my party on COO, I show 20 to 25 items total. That's it. That's all they can handle. Eight to 10 toys and the rest are the mild products. But you're not gonna see me showing perfume. It's on my table. I spray the catalogs with it. They're gonna smell it. They're like, what is that? When they ask, I just hold it up and I pass it. I don't demo it, I don't explain it. It's perfume, right? Like you either like it or you don't. It doesn't need an explanation. Benoit balls needs an explanation. It needs a demo. They need to understand how it works. Lubricant, they need to understand the differences between them and why it's important. So there are certain things that require actual time and effort on your part and others where they either want it or they don't, but move on, right? Honestly, most of your time should be spent discussing the toys because it is a toy party. Okay. Uh, oh, product knowledge. Oh my gosh. Okay, so for real, this is really, really, really important. And guess what? When you're showing less, it's actually easier for you because you can focus on the things that you're showing, your core products that you're showing, and really get familiar with them instead of feeling like you need to know everything there is to know about 300 products. I don't know everything there is to know about our entire product line. I'm constantly learning new things about ingredients and all kinds of other stuff and ways to use them. But I'm really familiar with my core products. So when my clients come and they ask me detailed questions, I can answer them confidently. Your confidence sells those products. That's the bottom line. Now, what is the best way to ever sell any kind of product ever? Use it. Use it. Use it. So if you can't sell that executive, you clearly have never used it. <laughs> For real. Um, and even though we don't ever tell personal stories, because that's disgusting, um, your natural enthusiasm for the products that you love best will absolutely shine through your demos. So don't be afraid to use the product. That's what your free product is for. This is why you go help people at parties when they ask for an assistant. Get paid in product. Get the stuff that you want to be able to try, because I promise you, your sales will change when you are a user of the product. I have to tell you, I'm always bamboozled by people who go inactive. I'm like, you clearly don't use the products. You should go inactive. Because if you actually liked our product line, you'd be hammering through this stuff. I mean, seriously, the level of splash and wash that we use in our house, I, I should like buy stock in it. We use so much of it. So keeping active, $100 in retail every 60 days is nothing. Even your gift giving should be more than that. Baby showers, housewarming gifts, birthday gifts. I mean, stop spending your money at other stores. You're literally building someone else's dream and killing your own. Shop from your own store. All right, number five, ask the right questions in the shopping room. And I promise you, if you actually print these out on like an index card or something and have them in the room, and don't be afraid to use a cue card, y'all. Like when we transitioned over two years ago, I had been in business for eight years. My party was like this until I had a whole new friggin' product line and a different catalog and everything changed. So I had to be a new consultant again after eight years in business and it was eye-opening. But what happens is that they realize you're relatable. Like, oh, well, if she can use a cue card, I can use a cue card. It's okay to not have the answer to everything, right? And then your recruiting is easier because you're relatable. So I want you to print these out on a card so you have them and they go in order. There is a very specific order psychologically to these. So it's not just about asking the question, it's about how you ask it, what words are you using? You wanna make sure that you're asking open-ended questions, not yes and no answers, right? So how much fun did you have tonight? Give them the opportunity to gush. You were so fun, I learned so much. It got crazy out there. They're literally reminding themselves how much fun they had, right? Um, secondly, what questions can I answer for you? Everybody has questions, even if it's what form of payment do you take? They're gonna have at least one question, but let them exhaust all of their questions. And when you're doing these first two, you do not have a pen, a calculator, an order form, nothing in your hands. You are free-handed and completely focused on them. Because if you're standing there with a calculator and a pen, all that says is, give me all your money. And it's very aggressive. And women in particular are very in tune to that, and she will actually shop less. So put everything down, focus on her, and then when she's ready, that's when you jump in with writing things down. Third, which products do you love? There is often a difference between what they love and what they can go home with. But finding out what they love gives you your ammunition so that you can then start the negotiations for booking 
and joining your team, right? 